long before human civilization developed the technology to transform geographical terrains on earth they were tamed only by the ferocious flow of water even though it appears to be the most innocuous in its still state the intensity of its stream might cut through the largest structures ultimately influencing the topography of everything around it the repeating flow of water is a fairly basic idea that may be compared to radiation therapy one of the most significant diagnostic and therapeutic techniques in medicine repeated radiation treatments certainly destroy tumor cells but they also have a dangerous side effect it not only destroys the tumor cells but also affects the healthy cells around leading to numerous problems so what would happen if this radiation was administered excessively or if the body's unique anatomy could not withstand even the permitted level of radiation today's exploration of these concerns will introduce us to the inevitable course of radiation therapy osteoradio necrosis before diving into the topic let us look at this case scenario a 71 year old male patient presented with pain swelling and pus discharge associated with draining sinuses from the right side of his face for the past 15 days the patient was a known case of squamous cell carcinoma and had undergone a wide local excision neck dissection and adjuvant radiation the patient underwent an extraction 6 months post radiation and now complains of pain in the right retromolar region on clinical examination the bone was exposed and necrotic yellowish covering was seen on radiographic examination moth eaten appearance was seen what do you think is the likely cause of this pain since the patient had undergone radiation therapy in the past the most likely diagnosis is osteoradio necrosis through this video we will help you understand this topic in greater detail By definition osteoradio necrosis is an exposure of non vital non septic and non healing lesion of an irradiated bone which fails to heal without intervention it can be triggered by tooth extraction biopsies trauma related ill fitting dentures and periodontal procedures most often osteoradio necrosis spreads gradually getting worse and more painful which causes infections and pathological fractures do you ever wonder why the bone becomes involved after radiation treatment yet the other soft tissues and hard tissues remain unaffected the bones blend of organic and inorganic components which absorbs more radiation energy and is susceptible to necrosis may have something to do with this Radiotherapy appears to cause osteoradio necrosis because it affects the small blood vessels of the bone inducing inflammation which favors the generation of small thrombi that obliterate the vascular lumen and thus interrupt tissue perfusion this leads to hypoxia and hypovascularity likewise radiation therapy produces an increase in free radicals and alters collagen synthesis by damaging the fibroblasts in the connective tissue hypocellularity results from the loss of the bone's natural cellularity as a result of hypoxia under such conditions even minimal external trauma causes ulceration facilitating contamination and infection and thus favoring bone necrosis As the disease progresses, the bone destruction becomes radiologically evident as patchy radiolucent areas with radiodense islands of necrotic bone or sequestrum. In fact, the bone destruction may be severe enough to cause pathological fractures. According to Marx, progressive hypoxia, hypovascularization, and hypocellularity are observed in the affected bone. This is referred to as the 3H principle by Marx. The mandible is more affected than the maxilla because its sole blood supply is from the inferior alveolar vessels which shrink in size as age advances unlike the maxilla which has a robust blood supply from the nutrient arteries. The risk of developing osteoradio necrosis after extractions is higher in the posterior mandibular teeth with roots that lie below the mylohyoid line and when an atraumatic extraction is not possible 
have you ever wondered why the jaw bone is more prone to osteoradionecrosis than the rest of the body's bones it goes without saying that the mandible is highly radiation exposed due to its superficial location the jaw bones however act as an entry point for infections since they support the teeth as we saw in the case the patient experienced deep boring pain with swelling and pus discharge associated with draining sinuses on examination we saw that the bone was exposed which is a typical feature of osteoradionecrosis and on radiographic examination we saw moth eaten appearance these are the typical clinical and radiological findings in a patient suffering from osteoradionecrosis additionally osteoradionecrosis can present with trismus fetid odor pyrexia and pathological fractures osteoradionecrosis can cause multiple problems depending on any of these factors in children osteoradionecrosis can cause the interference with the normal growth and development of jaws and interfere in the eruption of teeth radiation caries can develop in adults as a result of tooth demineralization decreased salivary flow and an acidic saliva xerostomia mucositis periodontal alterations such as gingival recession periodontal pocket development loosening of teeth and radiation caries are other pathological changes effects of radiation on bone depends on quality and quantity of radiation size of portals used location and the condition of the teeth and the periosteum osteoradionecrosis increases 11 fold when the dose to the bone exceeds 66 gyri commonly given in concurrent chemo radiation when there is presence of extra nodal extension and positive margins when the dose is less than 60 gyri osteoradionecrosis is unlikely to occur intensity modulated radiation treatment and image guided radiation therapy have been developed to accurately target the tumor while preserving the surrounding normal tissues in order to lower the risk of osteoradionecrosis now let's say i told you that as a dentist you could prevent osteoradionecrosis from occurring in the first place itself when the patient was diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma this is how his mouth looked the molars were carious few incisors were mobile and there was generalized recession that was seen now to reduce the risk of osteoradionecrosis you would advise the patient to get all the hopeless teeth extracted the extraction should be as atraumatic as possible and should be planned 7 to 14 days before the radiation therapy in order to allow as much healing time as possible make sure that you cover the entire bone with soft tissue This is because as long as the overlying soft tissue is healthy the irradiated bone may function normally any sharp bony spicules should be trimmed the teeth which are needed to be restored should be restored for the teeth requiring endodontic treatment you should be very careful so that there is no entry of any microorganisms beyond the apex